Um, DC Fontana also passed away uh, a little yeah. earlier than that. She she died on uh, December the fourth, I think, and no, December second. She died on December second. Dorothy Catherine Fontana. Uh, she died on December second following a short illness. She was a writer and story editor for Star Trek, the the original series, uh, the animated series, The Next Generation, and Deep Space Nine. And also, also Voyager, maybe, maybe, maybe Voyager. I don't know. No, but she also, well, she also wrote episodes of dozens of TV shows, including Land of the Lost, Logan's Run, Dallas, The Waltons, Babylon Five. Uh, most of her Star Trek writing came in the original series. So I'm she she wrote ten episodes, but she did some script doctoring on probably a lot more episodes than that. All of them. All yeah. of them. So I don't I'm think gonna. It was a single script she didn't touch. I'm gonna defer to Rick and Chris because I'm sure you guys know more about DC Fontana than I am. So, go ahead, Rick. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna say is not to detract from Majel Barrett at all, but the real first lady of Star Trek was Dorothy Fontana. Uh, she was there. She was Gene Roddenberry's secretary at, from the very mm-hmm. beginning. And she kind of snuck in the back door of writing at a time when women really were not allowed. Uh, Allowed isn't really the right word because that would indicate that women were taken seriously enough to say no. They were just there. You know, women just didn't write for television. So the reason we know of her as DC Fontana is because she couldn't get taken seriously as Dorothy Fontana. So she just used her initials. And there are still people today who are finding out that DC Fontana was actually Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Um, She worked with Gene hand in hand uh, for the entirety of the original series from its inception to its cancellation. And then she went on and, and was, uh, I want to say she was an executive producer on TAS as well as a writer. Um, I'm looking that up right now. Um, I clicked on the wrong part of that. Hang on. Um, TAS being the animated series. Um, yeah. Because yeah. she, okay, she wrote Yesteryear, which is even amongst Star Trek fans who say that the animated series is not canon, which that's kind of a squishy topic. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Um, most people will say that Yesteryear is, and that's the one where uh, Spock goes back to his childhood through the Guardian of Forever and saves his young self from from getting killed. Um, A lot of stuff from yesteryear has been made canon by either Enterprise or Discovery uh, Mm -hmm. in later years uh, because it was such a great episode. You know, it was a Saturday morning cartoon, yeah, but I think if you you watch the the animated series with uh, an open mind it's a lot better than you remember it. Mm-hmm. Um, if, uh, if you remember it, if you know, I grew up, that was like the first li- uh, live action isn't the right word. The first, first run Star Trek I ever mm-hmm. saw was, was right. the animated series. And Dorothy Fontana was, you know, she was one of the driving forces behind that. And she also worked on the first season of TNG. She and David Gerald uh, and a few others, John D.F. Black, I think. And... Uh, I don't think Bob Justman was involved anymore at that point. No, no, yeah, Bob Justman was involved too. Uh, a lot of the TOS people were still involved in, in season one of TNG, uh, but most of them were gone by the end of it because of the, the chaos. And you can, there's a documentary called Chaos on the Bridge if you want to watch that. It's Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, Dorothy was, uh, an, um, you know, she was kind of the guiding force, especially for uh, most of Vulcan. Most of the Vulcan stuff mm-hmm. was came straight from her, Uh, you know, especially uh, um, Amok Time. That was all her, all Dorothy. And and she was active in the fandom right up until a couple of weeks before she passed away. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the Trek Files, Larry Nemechek's podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, He had her on several times. I kept thinking, I really have to try to get her to come onto my show. And I kept chickening out and chickening out and now you know even if she had you know said no it, i i should have 
and I wish I had because she was she was the mother of Star Trek and I I I, I can't I don't you cannot overstate her importance to the franchise. She also fleshed out a lot of Dax's backstory because the uh the episode of Deep Space Nine that she wrote was I can't remember the title off the top of my head, but it's Dax. one of the ones that was it Dax? I think so. Let me let me double yeah. check. But pretty I'm, kinda, I'm on memory alpha right here. Yeah, Dax. Yeah, <laughs> kind of went went into a, went into a lot of Dax's backstory and told some of that history and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, Chris, did you want to add anything? No, I think Rick has pretty much said it all. I was one of those people who did not know that Dorothy Fontana was a Dorothy until I was an adult. And I, I just remembered the name from watching the original series and going through um, Bajo Trimble's Star Trek Concordance when I was uh, younger and getting into my fandom. And it was quite a surprise to me to find out that DC Fontana, who I just assumed was a dude, was actually Dorothy. And I just, um, to reiterate with Rick, what, what Rick said, I think why she was so popular is because she fleshed out um, a lot of the stuff that fans really cling to now. And um, especially the Vulcan stuff. I mean, that's why that episode yesteryear is so popular because it speaks directly to the fans and it built the mythology significantly for the fans at a time when you were basically in a drought. Um, her episodes weren't, I mean, I'm, I guess some of them more because that was the nature of TV at the time. But it's thanks to her that we sort of have a broader Star Trek universe to play in with some kind of continuity and backstory and just a, a little bit broader than an adventure of the week kind of show. And, um, I just wish that I, I wish that they were able to do more of that with the early years of TNG. Not that TNG didn't wind up being an excellent show on its own merits, but those first two seasons, it still seems like they were fighting all of Roddenberry's worst impulses in storytelling and, and, and style. And um, I, I think that's a big reason why she and David wound up leaving, aside from all the other nonsense that was going on. Like Rick said, that, that documentary, Chaos on the Bridge. I thought that, that was uh, pretty fascinating. And to, to see her talking about it, it really gave me a sense of um, the history that she brought to TNG. Because as you guys know, I'm not the hugest TNG fan, but it's because of her that I got Deep Space Nine. It's because of her that I'm enjoying Discovery now. And um, yeah, it can't be overstated. It's a, it's a loss, definitely, to the franchise and to the fans. You know, and I was looking glad at her, to... Go ahead. Uh, just, just looking at her, at the, I, I couldn't remember which one she wrote for TNG. She, she wrote the original pilot for TNG, which was just the... the, the, the um, what, what was that? The... the, the Farpoint Station. That part the was, yeah, uh, but just that <laughs> that segment. You know, originally it was supposed to be just a one hour show, mm -hmm. and then it yeah. was that. You know, it was kind of like what happened with with T with the motion picture, where it was first it was a series, then it was a mov movie, then it was a series again, then it was a, a TV movie, then it became a movie. You know, there was all of this back and forth, and she wrote the encounter at Farpoint stuff. And then they decided to make it a two hour thing. And Roddenberry put the Q stuff around her story. Mm -hmm. And she she never really said that she wasn't thrilled with it. But you could tell from the way she tells the story that she didn't really like what happened with that. Yeah. Well, I was glad to see that uh, when I was researching this, that going by DC Fontana was her idea because I was afraid that it was going that I was going to find out that Gene Roddenberry told her to do that <laughs> or something like that. But at least, at least it was her idea and it wasn't just some dude saying, you'll never make it. If you, if anybody finds out you're a woman, <laughs> you know, something like that.